As a child I was always taking things apart. Um, my father used to say that uh, if I was given a birthday present or a Christmas present then he knew it was a good one if I actually immediately got the screwdrivers out and, and took it apart. Usually I managed to get it back together again but not, but not always. So there was that predisposition towards science right from the word go. Despite the fact that nobody in my immediate family was a scientist so I'm not quite sure where that came from. Um, and then, then um, I went to Bromley Grammar School and came under the influence of, of a man called Gerald Pullum who had just joined as head of physics at about the same time as I joined the school. And he was just a very inspirational character. Um, I'm sure that other, other people will have, will have said this, that you know, occasionally one meets someone, a teacher, and, and that is the catalyst. And for me that was, that was Gerald Pullum. Uh, and it was physics. I think by then I, I was probably sort of knew I was scientifically inclined, but physics was a thing that came out as opposed to chemistry or, or biology. And it was also probably a good time. We're talking um, the mid '60s. I mean, there was there were lunar landings and and all sorts of other exciting things. So it was the right time to be in physics. Um, so by the time it came to choosing a university. Um, you know, it was physics, I knew that. There wasn't any contest, really. Um, and I was lucky enough to, to get into Oxford, um, where I studied um, at University College. Uh, and I suppose I wasn't really sure what exactly what I wanted to do, but research was quite attractive. Um, and again, I was lucky enough to be able to stay on and, and do research at the, at the Clarendon Lab. I mean, one of the the things we used to do uh, at school, that I, I can't really emphasise just how different it was in those days from, from, from what it is today. Um, physics practicals were a great, great thing uh, and, and Gerald Pollan was very, um, very insistent that we do them properly and, and that we took great pleasure in doing them. I'm not always necessarily doing what was on the sheet but, you know, inventing other things. I mean, in principle, we did physics practicals once a week. Uh, when the bell went at 10 to 4, that was just a minor disturbance and we carry on until either we got tired or the cleaners threw us out. Um, and if it didn't work out that day, there was the opportunity of coming in when the other class was doing it the following day. So it would be by no means unusual um, to, to almost spend as many hours in schools after hours as, as during hours. And I remember the first time I did this, or well, the first time I was particularly late, I don't think I got home till seven o'clock or something, and my parents were by then actually going up the walls, so, you know, what on earth had happened to their son? But that was just the way it was, and it was, it, it, it was a perfectly natural thing to do. And we're also in the era when school was as much about all the other things as it was about curriculum. So there were lots of other activities going on, and in my case, in my school, the dramatic society was a particularly strong element. Um, I should say that a few years ahead of me was a guy called Michael Johnson, who you all know as Michael York, the actor. So that, you know, there was a very strong dramatic society and I got involved in that, doing the technical things, doing the lighting, sound effects and all that sort of thing.